Welcome back friends to this final sketch in this series of seven and I've tried to leave the best or at least the most complicated to last. So this is St Paul's Cathedral in London and obviously it's got the most intricate most detailed architecture of all the studies that we've looked at even more so than Grand Central Station and there's also some really dramatic perspective going on. We've got three point perspective going on multiple vanishing points so on this side for example we've got all of these lines which would converge to a point somewhere around this bottom left hand corner. Same on this side, we've got a different vanishing point for this one. And then we've got this face here, which would have a similar vanishing point to this one, but that would change slightly as well. And then look at the dramatic verticals. All of them converging into a point way up somewhere in the sky. The photograph has been taken from what you would call a worm's eye view. So very close to the building, looking from ground level, looking straight up. And it creates this real dramatic looming sense that I think will make a nice strong composition. Now like Grand Central Station, on the face of it, this does look really quite complicated and potentially overwhelming to a lot of people who maybe are a little bit less experienced with their drawing skills. It looks like it could be very time consuming as well. But what we're gonna do, as we have in previous lessons, is really simplify this. So we're gonna look at the big blocks, the big shapes. This aspect here is a big shape. This one here, this dome is a, a simplified curve. And as long as you give some early consideration to these major angle lines and you get them in a good place and at a good angle so that your perspective largely looks correct, it's then up to you how much of this detail you put in. You can get really quite quick, quite loose, quite impressionistic with all of these details, which is what I'm gonna be doing in the, the time that's available. And as long as that overall structure is correct, those sketchy marks, they're gonna look like they're loose and sketchy by design. So what are the most important things to reserve and retain in this particular scene and what are those that I can play down? Well, obviously, as we've just spoken about the dramatic perspective, that's something that I really want to get right. So I need to look at these verticals and the angle lines of these verticals. I want to make sure that the levels, the various levels of the uh, different floors in the structure, that there's good perspective going on there. So that's the most important thing. I think the dome structure being the focal point, this is where the eye is led up to here. I think probably spend a little bit more time on this compared to say uh, these features here. I quite like the tree, it's maybe a little bit central, maybe breaks the composition up a bit too much, but it's gonna help speed things up a little bit by you know covering up a lot of the detail. I'm gonna put that in. It's obviously been there a long time. Same for this one as well. I think this will be a nice little bit of color and it just helps to direct the eye again back to the focal point. In terms of what I'm gonna play down, I'm certainly not gonna be putting in all of these little features. If I do, they'll only be going in very loose and very quickly. Features like this, I'll be putting in literally with just little scribbles. I think this structure here is important to get in, so we'll put that one in. The pillars we'll put in quite quickly, making sure that again, that we observe the angles of those and the perspective. But a lot of the smaller detail and the finer detail, I'm either gonna omit completely, or I'm gonna put in very, very loosely, very impressionistically. Okay, so with that said, let's get on and make a start on this sketch. So I'm working on half a sheet of A4 as I have done for the last few sketches. That's the uh, Grand Central Station one above. So this is half a sheet of A4 American letter size paper. So we've got that space to work in. So I need to think about how big the sketch is gonna be so that I can fit everything in. The last thing that I wanna do is just start working at the top, drawing in the dome and then finding that I either go too small or too big and I can't fit on the various features on that I want to. So the way that I'm gonna start is, hopefully this is gonna be obvious if you've seen uh, any of the other sketches in this series, I'm gonna look at some of the major landmarks and spend a couple of minutes just plotting those out. So one of the first, one of the easiest kind of go-tos is to think about your center line. And if I look at the reference photograph, I can see that the very top of the cross on the top of the dome is just slightly to the right of center. And by the way, a lot of these marks that you see me put down, these initial kind of plotting out marks that I've put down in the previous lessons, you don't have to put those on your paper. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. If it's more complicated, I might make a few marks like in a scene like this. A lot of the time, I'm just thinking about them mentally. But hopefully, if you've seen all of those previous sketches, it's obvious by now that these initial construction marks are not gonna interfere with the final sketch. You don't need to worry that you can't erase them. Okay, so that's my first little landmark. And the next one that I'm gonna put in is, I'm just gonna look at this big angle here, and I'm just gonna think about how this breaks this picture plane up. So I'm looking at where does it approximately enter from this side of the picture plane. So obviously it's not down here, and it's not way up the top. It's gonna to be somewhere around that position there. 
And what's most important is that I get the angle of this right, or at least reasonably accurate. Again, if you want to, you can hold your pen over your reference to get a better judge of that. And if I don't get it right first time and I need to adjust it, so be it, it's not gonna be a problem. So I think this line is gonna be something around about that. So I'm just gonna do a quick check. So I've got my iPad up top here. And I think that's good enough. Don't worry if you don't get it right first time. That comes with practice. If I had made this mark too flat, in fact, look, I'm gonna put this extra mark in just to show that it doesn't matter. Again, I'm using the side of the pen so the mark isn't too bold, but this mark here is not gonna show up in the final sketch. It's not gonna interfere with it at all. Now, because I've identified this as the center of the dome, what I can do is take a, a line down, a, a going to say a vertical line, but it's not vertical. We'll see that in a moment. But I'm going to take a line down that is going to represent the center of the dome. Now, when I say center, because of the angle that we're looking at, there's actually more of the dome showing on this side than there is on this side. But this is a point that runs right from the center of the cross. And I'm looking how it runs down through the dome. And then there's a pillar. Can you see that? The pillar that it runs through. And then it pretty much splits the tree in half. But this line has got an angle to it. It's not straight down. There's an angle to it. So again, if you want to hold your pen over that angle, you can do. But I'm just going to try and do that by eye. And it's going to be something around about that. Now, as simple as these two little lines are, and if I wasn't talking about them, you know, we'd put these in within seconds. Can you see how they help you now create reference points to put in more complicated structures? So imagine now if I wanted to put this dome in, I can see where does the dome end here? We know it comes up, it's going to be around about here, isn't it? And I can look at this shape, this little abstract kind of cheese wedge shape, whatever you call it, a little segment here. How does that compare to what's on your reference? And you can visualize that. So let's carry this on. So I'm going to look now at this angle here and I'm going to put in a line here. I can see that this top line ends just before this pillar. Can you see that? The point at which this angle comes off is just before this central pillar that we've identified. So I'm going to put in this little line here to create this V shape. And then I can put in the vertical Obviously it's at an angle, but I can put in the vertical that runs down here and then it gets hidden by the tree. Now, even though most of this line is hidden, just think about what the angle that, that of this line would be. You don't have to measure it. What you can do is compare it to this angle here. Everything is fanning out. So you can see from this point, these verticals fan out in this direction. And then as you get away from this line, they fan out in this direction. So if your lines over here or that kind of angle, just make a judgment of what this one would be. It's gonna be a little bit more than this one, but it's gonna be less than this one. And as long as you get this reasonably accurate, and you don't even have to be reasonably accurate, it just has to be a slightly different angle to this one, it's gonna look right to the eye. Now we can put this little angle in, and this one here is not parallel to this one, okay? so. It's not parallel to that. If you have a look, because it's further forward, this little block is further forward than this one, just quickly, and if you need to, put your pen over, but quickly observe how this is a slightly steeper angle than this one. Just ever so slightly steeper. And then we can put this vertical in. So again, I'm not gonna try and uh, measure that on the reference. All I'm doing is looking at this line here and creating an angle that is slightly fanned out from that one. I'm just thinking about how everything will converge. Now let's look at this angle here. How does it compare to that one? So this angle is steeper and it's ever so slightly flatter. Everything's getting flatter this way. So as long as I do this line just slightly flatter than that one, that's gonna look okay. And then for this vertical, we've already seen how this is a flatter angle. If you wanna measure it, you can do but you can just make an estimation from fanning it out. But one thing that I should point out is, how do you know how wide to make this? Well, this is just a gauging and a guessing the width of this comparative to say the width of that. What does this as a block look like? Ignore all the detail, the pillars, this little kind of doorway structure in here, um, or this little, I don't know what you would call it, but this little structure in the middle here, ignore all of that and just think of this as a shape. I'm just going to extend that line 
take it down right to the bottom of the page. And then while we're in this area, let's put this last angle in here. So again, just observing that. I'm trying to make the best guess. I'm actually just going to test that one. So I think mine needs to be a little bit steeper. I'm not worried about this uh, little triangular structure on the top. I'm not worried about any of the pillars, any of this uh, detail in the, the top, around the top edge of the line. All I'm thinking about is the very basic structure. I can put this one in as well because this is an imaginary line that I've used as a center point. So this point here, again, I'm just, oh, I'm just thinking about how this line would fan out slightly. So now let's move on to the dome. Obviously that's going to be a little bit more challenging to draw because it's a curved line as opposed to straight line. So always a little bit trickier, but we've got some good reference points now that we can use to help us draw that in more accurately. So the first thing I'm going to do is just have a look at where the dome uh, breaks into this particular shape here. And it's around about half of halfway through this distance. So about there. And then if I look on this side, it's about a third of the way through. Okay. So about a third of this distance. And I'm just going to put in the shape that represents this lower part of the dome. So where the pillars end, that part there. So we'll just put that in for now. And just take a few seconds to just look at the nature of the curve. If you want to, you could ghost your pen over your reference to get a feel for that. But what I can see is that it's quite flat here. And then as it gets around to this edge, it kind of increases in its severity, in its amount of curve. So... I'm using the side of the pen again, just so that I need to make a couple of attempts at this. The marks aren't too bold. So the way that this line looks and feels to me is that it's got more curvature there. And then as we get towards the center point, it then flattens off. And then there's a thickness to that part. So I'm just going to put that in as well. And I can see how it is narrow there. And then it gets thicker and wider at this point. And then here's our central pillar. So let's put that in. So I'm just going to do a very slight tapering because again, I'm thinking about how all of these verticals converge to one another. So I'm just making this slightly thinner at the top, slightly wider at the bottom. It's only slight. And then I've got the next pillar here. And I can see one here. This little negative shape here tells me that this is in a reasonably good position. I've got a little triangle, triangular shape there. Again, I need to think about how the angles of these are going to change. They're going to fan out. And they're getting closer together as they get further away. And I just about see one there. Now for the next part of the curve, I'm just going to have a look at where this line is here. I'll just highlight this on the reference photograph so you can see what I'm looking at. And again, ghost your pencil, uh, your pen, not your pencil, over this line if you need to gauge the curve of that, the curvature. And I'm just looking at where it breaks into this shape and how it creates this flattened M shape. It's kind of like a seagull, you know, the, the seagulls that people put in the sky. So this is the kind of abstract stuff and the weird stuff that I'm thinking about as, I, as I'm drawing. But the more abstract shapes that you can see, the more accurate your drawing will be. You don't want to think about a building and a structure. You want to think about abstract shapes. And then for the top part of the dome, it's actually, just look at the width of this bit here, and it's actually about the same width. This is what's called foreshortening. So in reality, if we were looking at this front on at the same level, this piece here is going to be a lot smaller, a lot less height than this piece of the dome here. But because of the foreshortening, if you actually look at that in your reference photo, the distance from here to here is about the same as here to here. All right, so I haven't made a very good job of that. I'm going to just adjust this so it's much flatter. And then it's actually probably even flatter than that. And then it runs down into here. And then we've got this little structure on the top. 
So again, just think about how these little lines are going to converge. And then when you get to these top lines here, these are going to be, these are quite important. So just have a look at the angle, measure them if you need to. But this little line is a, again, as a, a quick test and a quick measure is going to be a steeper line than this one. This line here, it's fanning out. This line here, it's fanning out. So that one probably needs to be a little bit steeper. And then we've got a little bit more of the structure on top. So I'm just putting in an impression of that more than anything else. There's a little globe or dome on the top of that one. And then this cross, I'm just looking at that angle line. There we go. So far so good. So now with this basic structure in place, we can start to add some more details, but I don't want to get too detailed yet. I'd still want to look at the basic structures and the basic levels within the building. We could actually put the tree in to save doing some of the details. So let's just look at this as a, again, an overall kind of triangular shape. Uh, I can just draw the various bits or the various clumps of the branches. And now I think the next most important line, the biggest, most obvious one that I can see is this level here. Now this level kind of comes out and then goes in a touch and then out a touch. Forget that, just look at one line for now. Just look at the angle of that. Remember, it's gonna fan out slightly. And if you look at all of the horizontal lines along here, they are all sloping in this direction. You don't get to the point where any of them are horizontal because the uh, photographer is below the line of all of these. So these lines are sloping up fanning out in that direction so just putting this one in and i'm just looking at this shape here just the width of this just the nature of that wedge shape and then let's put a thickness for this top part in so just one line to cater for all of that and then what about some of these pillars so I'm going to look at this first one here and I'm just going to look where it is in relation to the dome. So I can see this, there's a little kind of top piece out there and the pillar is running just along the edge of this dome. So that's my reference point there. So the angle of these pillars is going to fan out slightly from this one. You see that? And there is, there's two of them. This one's actually a little bit closer in, so let's put that in here. And then we've got one next to it. So it's gonna fan out from that one ever so slightly. And there's a little width to that that you can see. And then these two are gonna fan out some more. So just looking at the angle of these. And then we can put this kind of bottom shape in the way that it sticks out. So just look at that little angle line there, this little tiny line, and then there's the bottom edge. And then from this pillar here, this comes down to the bottom here. Let's do a thickness for this, but don't get lazy. Don't just draw a parallel line to this. Everything is gonna get slightly wider. Remember these lines are fanning out. And then we've got some more stuff going on here. So hopefully you can see I'm not concerning myself with all of the various details and the, the horizontals. There's so many of them that are going on in here, but that's not the purpose of this sketch to put those in. Although if I was going to put them in, I would still be doing this kind of work here, this building in, this initial building in. And if I was doing this in pencil, you know, you can erase all of uh, the extraneous marks later on but I still want to focus on the big basic structure first before I start to put the details in. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very difficult uh, to get your perspective right. So let's have a look at this little structure here. So the triangle, just think about, you measure the lines if you want to, but just think about how the center of this triangular shape and the center of this structure, it's actually not going to be in the center of this shape because again, there's foreshortening going on, which means that this distance here on the left-hand side is gonna be smaller than the distance on the right-hand side. 
So the actual center line is just going to be to more towards the left hand edge of this. Okay, so without me having to measure and hold up, I can just make that as a, a judgment. And then let's put the triangle in. So these lines may be flatter than what you think. So if you want to measure them, obviously measure them with your pen, put them over your reference. But the idea is that you measure some of those big initial lines, but then as you get into more of the detail, just have some confidence that you can use your other lines as, the, as your gauge and your measure. So this line here then is another important one. So I want to think about how it would meet behind the tree. So if I carry that angle on and then it would come out in a round about this position. Remember these lines are fanning out this way. And I can create in a similar way and create the widths at the top. this little triangular structure. So just look at the angle of that line, maybe look at the negative shape there just to help you put this triangle in because it's in real extreme perspective. So it's a very kind of funny shaped triangle. And then we've got these little statues. I'm just gonna put them in very impressionistically. So let's put some of these pillars in. I'll speed this up. It's the same process as this one, the pillars and some of the, the details there just to this level. And then I'll come back in and just very quickly talk about how we give an impression of all of the intricate detail that's remaining. So now that all of the basic blocks are in place and the bigger details that I, uh, I wanted to put in a little bit more carefully, the rest of all the little intricate details and the intricate architecture, I'm gonna put in really quickly and quite impressionistically. It's up to you now how, it's up to you how far you take it. If you wanna start putting in uh, these with more detail and more accuracy, you can do, but I wanna try and keep this true to how I would sketch if I was sat there where the photographer is uh, sketching this on location. So I'm gonna get really quick then, and I'm not gonna be worried about if I miss bits out and uh, if I get bits that are slightly in the wrong perspective, these little bits and pieces, I just wanna create little details, strengthen some lines as well. So I'm gonna do bits of shading and uh, tone, because again, this is not an outline sketch as I've said for all of them. It's not an outline sketch for watercolor. I want this to be a sketch in, in and of its own right. So just looking at the major areas of shadow, strengthening those. I want to keep the pen moving all the time. That helps me, uh, or helps stop me from getting too caught up on detail. Nice strong shadow in there. And then this is a, a darker color. So a bit of hatching on that. So towards the outer edges, really quick, really loose. But hopefully you can see just how quickly I'm putting these details in. So all of this is in shadow. All this intricate detail in here, squiggles with the pen. Real nice strong cast shadow just on the top of that door. And then we just put a little bit of detailing on that. A bit of cross hatching. 
maybe just a little impression of brickwork here and there I think would be quite nice Because this is the focal point, this dome, this is where I want my strongest darks. So these darks between the pillars are really important. I want to keep the pillars the whiter the paper. Wherever you've got your lightest light against your darkest dark, that is always going to be a strong pull to the viewer's eye. So it's quite important that I get these nice strong darks in. I don't want to just leave that up to the watercolour. I'm just trying to show a little bit of detail and interest in there as well. Okay, that'll do for the pen work then. Hopefully you could see from that time lapse just how quick and how sketchy I got with, uh, with the mark making. But hopefully it still works because it's sitting on top of a reasonably solid foundation, a solid perspective and a solid structure. And so these sketchy marks look like they're there by design, not because they've been poorly observed. So let's go and add a little splash of colour. Shouldn't take too long, certainly be a lot quicker than the sketch. And, uh, and we'll see what it looks like. Adding a bit of colour then. So I'm going to stick to... Pretty much the same sort of uh, basic colours that I've used for most of these sketches. Yellow ochre being a favourite. So we'll add a little mix of that up top. And I'll use that as the basis for the brickwork. I want a really light wash of that, I think. I'm going to get a little bit of alizarin. And I'll use these plus a bit of the ultramarine just to create a shadow colour. I'll get some of the ultramarine on this side. That's obviously made a bit of a purple with the, the red that's still on the brush, but that's fine. And then we'll add in a little bit of, let's clean that through, we'll add in a little bit of the burnt sienna as well. And those four colours are all that I'm going to use on the building. And we'll add a little touch of green, obviously, for the tree, a few greens, but we'll come on to those in a moment. Okay, so cleaning the brush out. Let's get rid of that brown. And I'm going to get a really light wash of the uh, yellow ochre really nice light wash because there's a lot of sunlight on this side probably go even lighter than that and I'm just going to cover all of this area really really quickly I think it's nice to leave a little bit of uh, the paper showing through in, in places rather than doing a complete wash over the top. Bit of a stronger mix there, but they are yellow. It's kind of yellow stonework. And we'll just go over this side as well. This is obviously in shadow, so we'll change the, the colour of that. But just as a starter, we'll put that in. real pale wash for the pillars in fact we'll just do a little bit of color just on the right hand side where there's a bit of shadow and we'll leave the left hand side lighter
and then a little touch of the colour in here but again leaving a bit more of the white of the paper to show through because this side is catching more of the sunlight isn't it this little aspect here all right and then we can mix up a bit of a shadow colour so just pulling the brown into the yellow and then I'm going to add a touch of the well, what should have been blue but it's obviously a bit more of a purple colour now just get a bit more blue into that Okay, and let's add, test out in some of these areas. I'm going to want that a little bit bluer. And all I'm doing is just strengthening the areas that I've already laid in with the ink, that I've decided with shadow with the ink. I'm just going to mix up a bit of a green colour, just with the blue and the yellow. Just add a little bit of variation more than anything else. So we've got lots of shadow in this area. Get a bit of a stronger colour, so I'm just taking some of the brown and mixing it in with that purple there. But we'll just let some of this area dry a little bit. Maybe it's a few touches. I can just strengthen a few little bits and pieces. Just have a little play about with some of the details, maybe. And now the dome is this kind of silvery blue colour and it's only very pale. May need a touch more blue in. Really, really pale, so I'm going to squeeze lots of water through the brush. Maybe just test that out. I think that's not going to be too far off. So it's just a hint of colour really more than anything else. And then we can get just a little bit of cadmium yellow, just as a bit of a more vibrant colour. Maybe a little touch of red. Just a little spot colour right at the top there. All right, what about some green then for the trees? A little bit of blue for the sky, and I think that will do. So a lot quicker. All of the work is done with the pen. And this is just adding a really simple wash of colour over the top. Now you could mix your own green if you wanted to, really, really simply with something like the ultramarine blue and the cadmium yellow. Or you can use one of the pre-mixed. Doesn't matter, there are no rules. So I'm just going in with a lighter, kind of more yellowy green to start with. Just where... It will catch the sunlight and then while that's still wet you can actually just drop some of that into this one as well touch more yellow maybe just in a couple of areas just of a very up a little bit and then while it's still reasonably damp i'm going to get a stronger mix so a bit more blue but mainly a stronger mix more than the color a little bit of that yellow ochre touch of brown maybe just to again darken it i think that'll be okay and then let's just have a look at some of the shadow shapes just some darker areas just to split this shape up
last colour. I've used the Prussian blue for pretty much every sky, so why change things now? Let's clean the brush and get just a very, very small hint of colour. There's some clouds in the reference, so we maybe just put... I'm going to actually go with the ultramarine and the Prussian. And then we'll just add a little spot of colour just in this top right hand corner here. Just a little hint, a suggestion of clouds. And you know, I think that'll do. I think that's uh, all it needs. I said it before, it's mostly about the sketch, getting the perspective right, that initial sketch, and making sure that those big major lines are in a good position and a good placement. And if you do that, and then you add the details in afterwards, adding the watercolour is really, really simple. So that's all of our sketches complete now. What I'm going to do is have a little walk through uh, each of the seven, just revisit them now that they're all done. Obviously we'll let this dry and just talk about maybe some of the things that work, some of them that don't. I'll just mention what I like as a sketch and uh, the ones that I maybe want to take on to a, a more developed piece of artwork. And of course, you may have a different opinion to me, but I'm just going to take you through some of the things that I've learned that hopefully can help you on your sketching journey.